Muddler, I have some. First thing you're going to do is you're going to first put on some lead. And you want to put it on the front half of the hook. Is this tie along this time, Mitch? Yes. It's O2O, that's why. I put more in that. That'll hurt your ear. <laughs> Just the hook on there will sure. hurt your ear. Yeah, when that hits your ear, you'll know it. You'll know it. How much are we doing? Front half? Just the front just the front half. If it's 035, you don't need to put that much that many wraps on there, but I've got about I've got about fifteen to eighteen wraps on there. Of O two O. And then I lock the thread down, or lock the lead down with uh, tying thread, front and back. Now notice I'll leave about a quarter of an inch in front of the lead, because that's where that's where the uh, the deer hair that's where the deer hair is going to be attached. That's that's so true. What's this called? The bullet head muddler. Were those about number two hooks? Pitch? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a size two, four extra yeah, yeah, long. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build, build up the body. And I use the inside packing of the core, so pull the core out of the, the thing. And watch out that you don't let the oh. material fray. Which material? The core or the inside? So pull it out. The core, the, the mylar. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, is, is I'll take, take the three smaller pieces and I'll start it just a little bit behind the uh, lead and tie it down and then wrap it backwards right on top of the hook shank. Okay. And then about a half an inch from the from the uh, back of the hook, reach in there and just clip one of those out, and then tie that down. Then reach back, go about a quarter, about an eighth of an inch, and then tie, and then pull another piece out, cut it out, tie that down. So that you get a you get a tapering body going down there. Okay. Just so that just so that it's tapered down by the time you reach the back end of the hook. Okay. Now, right on the back end, I'll take a piece. I'll take a piece of uh, of marabou. Take a chunk of marabou, and all you're all you're doing is taking enough material to give it some movement in the back. It's going to have plenty of movement on the top, but all you want is just enough material to give it a little movement in the back, about like that. Okay. And then I'll tie this on. Mm, that's nice. On the top of it like that. Mm -hmm. And then clip it off. Now, this isn't actually a pattern. This is this is a style that I use. You can make it anything you want. You can make just a regular uh, shank with a uh, 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 oval mylar just wrapped down there or you can make uh, make it with a crystal chenille body doesn't make any difference once you got that on there then if you want to you can you can trim it to any size you want by pinching it off making it straight like that pinching it off and using your thumbnail 
just like that. Hold it tight and pull it off. That gives it kind of a blunt end. <coughs> Don't use your scissors because it just makes it flat and square back there. Now what you do is you take your take your mylar body and from the front slide it on to the slide it on and just put it just a little bit past where the uh, uh, tail is tied in there so you have plenty of room. Reach up with your thread, put a loose wrap around it, and then come in tight. Okay. Put about three or four more wraps around there, and then whip finish it. Right there. Whip right finish. there. Uh -huh. Whip finish it really. Yeah. Yep. So you could extend it more, and then you could make tease it, it out. You could you make it to. as long as you want. You uh -huh. can tease it you can tease out. It, yeah. I usually like to just cover the the joint area there, gotcha. where it's, I don't like to make the thread wrap that thick. Okay. And if you have it, take some head cement and put it on that wrap. You guys can see you guys can see that this material is really translucent. You can see through it. So whatever color you use underneath it will show through. So if you want some highlights of olive or uh, you want some red in between there or whatever, you can always paint the underbody a little bit and it'll show through. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take your thread, hold it in one hand, and pull on the mylar with the other. So what you're going to do is you're going to stretch it over the top of the mylar. So you cut the thread off, huh? Yeah, cut the thread off. Stretch it over the mylar, and then as close to, as close to the beginning of the body as you have it there, tie it tie it in right there. After you have that tied in, you can just reach over and clip off the rest of the mylar that's hanging over the edge. Just don't cut it straight. So you end up with a real tight body. Yeah. Then you can tie it down. Tie it down. Really tight, secure. Okay, now I'm going to pass around a piece of rabbit strip. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure it off from the eye of the hook to the bend of the, to the, bend of the hook. And right there you're going to cut it off. But what I want to show you is you have to be careful how you cut how you cut this uh, rabbit fur off because if you don't you ruin it for the next person who's going to get it from you what you do is you slide the slide the uh, scissors in between the hair right up against the skin and clip it off there that way you don't ruin the tail section of it for yourself or the section for the next person who's going to get it okay now that you have the rabbit strip, what you, get, what you need to do is you need to taper the rabbit strip. All right? So what you're going to do is stroke the hair back at the very tip, and you're going to cut a little corner off of it, off of both sides, like that. So you're tapering the front of the, the rabbit strip. All right? You're tapering it just like this. And actually, you want to taper it even more. <coughs> you want a tight point? You want a fairly <coughs> long taper on that. And it's because it's the long taper that actually makes the, that allows the hair to, to move back and forth, side to side. That's the good thing about this fly. It, it actually wants to swim. Okay.
Now on the back half of the fly, you're going to have to do the same thing, but you're going to be tapering it even longer. So if you can take a look at what I'm doing here, slide it. Okay, so you have a strip that looks something like that, right? Now the short tip section, you want to tie that in right where you tied in the material itself. And make sure that that wing is right on top of the fly. As soon as you tie that in, get it tied in, mm -hmm. put some head cement on it. Actually, it might have been a good idea to put a little head cement on there before you tied the, the wing on there in the first place. Hold it, please. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to run your thread right up to the hook eye. <clears throat> right up against the hook eye itself far forwards as you can get that thread. All right. Now comes the portion where you're going to need deer hair. It, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter the color of the, the deer hair. You can uh, make it any color you want. If you're tying an all black fly, uh, black deer hair will work. Um, <coughs> I just happen to have a lot of this natural, so we're tying it natural tonight. And what you're going to do is you're going to use just a little bit less than what you're going to spin. And the reason for that is because you can see that this hair is all different sizes here. So when you go to stack it or, or comb it out, you'll find out that you end up with a lot less than you actually really want. So take yourself a fairly good chunk. I'd say non-compressed non about a half an inch in diameter that's, a lot of hair. Mm -hmm. that's because you're going to pull out a whole bunch and when, you, when you use this grab it by the tips like this and then comb out the stuff on the inside just like that okay so basically so basically you're going to end up you're going to end up with a, a, a stack of material right around at the tips that look about like that, about the size of a pencil. Right. And you take your hair stacker, you slide the tips in the hair stacker, When you go to grab your hair, hair out of your stacker, what you're going to do is you're going to pull it out so that it's facing, tips facing the hook eye. Okay? So when you pull it out, it's going to be the tips facing the hook eye. Alright. When you get your hair, when you get your hair stacked well enough, pinch the tips and pull it out. Like that, all right. You're gonna grab the butts. That's a lot of hair. You're gonna grab the butts and you're going to measure it, and it's going to be about half the length of the hook shank. Right. You can see that, all right. So I'm going to grab it by the tips and I'm going to cut it off right there. Now you can do two things. You can tie it in the way it is and go back in and clip it off afterwards or you can clip it beforehand. Clip it beforehand because what ends up happening is is you end up with hair all over the place. And lots of fibers standing up. 
and lot yeah and lots of errant fibers standing up. So what you do is you mark it to where you're gonna go. Where you're gonna cut it, cut it. Yep. And then you cut it like that. Alright? Mm -hmm. Then what you do is you take your hair and you push it around Oh, that's you different. push it over the hook eye, all right? Ah. Push it over the hook eye, make a loose wrap around it. Okay, make a loose wrap around it. You don't want the butts to stick out that far. You want it to only go where you tied in the wing, all right? Now, which end do you push in, the fine end or the, no, the butts? Cut in. Tips are always pointing over the eye. Gotcha. Thank See, you. that's why you got to pull it out that way. Otherwise, when you keep switching it back and forth, yeah. you keep changing that's it. Then it changes. It changes the uh, the level. Then you have to restack it again. Yeah, All right. So yeah, once you get it in there, you put. Yeah. Go ahead and watch it right there. All right. So the first thing I did was I put a loose wrap around there. This is my second loose wrap. Then I'll reach over with my left hand. Mm -hmm. I'll tight. pinch it and pull. Yeah, right I'll pinch it and pull tight. You don't, it's not as tight as if you were going to uh, spin the deer hair. Okay. But if you, if you pinch it down and you, and you pull it down tight and you work your way backwards to the tie-in point mm -hmm. hold, slide your fingers backwards so you don't get all of that butt section just hanging up tie it backwards until it comes right up to where right up to where that butt section is right where the wing is tied in okay you want that tied down best thing is don't let it go then once you got the, once you got the thread right there where the wing is tied in right at the back of where the wing is tied in take your fingers Push and Push start pushing back. yep start pushing the hair oh, backwards you cut oh, this. Him to tie the guys cut this part off oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't cut any of it okay off what you do is you slide your fingers over the whole bundle of deer hair yeah. and you can see that it's got like a bullet head forming right I there can do that Ken. okay yeah very careful See that? Did you have a tool right. to push and then back? right there where you got the wing tied in, yeah. put about three wraps of thread. Cinch it tight. And then cinch it tight. This might work. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that might work. Well, it needs a little, little parachute on the back. Yeah, a little, a little parachute on the back. I'm looking, I'm looking for something like that. I'm, I'm thinking this would work. Once you, got, once you got it, once you got the bullet head formed, Take your whip finisher, put a couple of whip finishes right there. I think I can do it. See what I'm saying? This thing here, just shove it and hold it for a second. The thing is, you got to be able to push it back and and tie. I'm thinking you could like lick it. Lick it and shove it. No, it pen. No, he 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 was he's got the you know, it's not big Okay. Now, if you want to clear the bottom, if you want to clear the bottom of the fly, you can take your scissors and just cut it flat on the bottom if you want, or you can just leave it the way it is. I'll just go ahead and leave it the way it is. And once you whip finish it, put on some head cement because it's not a tight, it's not a tight circle area there uh -huh. behind that the... That looks good. Look what he's done. Now it's secure and all together. That looks very nice, yes. Mitch, that looks great. Yeah, it does look good, man. I like that. Yeah. And, then, and then what you've got is you've just got your minnow and it swims back and forth like this as you're... Sweet. This is the only muddler type that's really worked for me. The other thing you can do is, is since, since the head is made out of deer hair, if you want it to, if you really want it to look like a minnow, you can glue plastic eyes on, on the side. And if you don't want it to fray when you get the fish hitting it, coat the whole head with head cement. 
Otherwise, otherwise, the first fish you get will kind of freeze it. Yeah, it'll fray the whole thing out. That makes sense.